We're live! Yay! We're live! Hello, everyone. Oh, I just got the notification on my phone that we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you doing tonight? Um, we are all here and very excited to discuss Moxie by Jennifer Matu, which Woo! is our Biblio Book Club of the Month for I don't know what months it is. I never know what months we read books for anymore. <laughs> it was October through no, December. I, think was, I thought it was September to October. Maybe that was it. No, we were, no, like, doing a live no, show. because we did the three months. So, like, was it... No, August to October. August yes, September. that was it. August to October. <laughs> okay, and I knew October was um, in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, just as a note for those of you who participate in our um, book club reading live show and whatnot, the next book for, is it December to February? Is that the correct month? January. Yeah. November to January. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever the months are the next book we are reading is renegades by marissa meyer so we're changing it up a little bit and i'm really really excited for it because i just got it i think you're right about the months well, november well, to well, january video well, wasn't that what you got it yeah i literally picked it up in my blindfolded books video <laughs> Oh, so fun. I'm very, very excited for that. Um, so right now you we have a, a short summary of that one. Oh, I don't even remember what it is, but I'll look it up on good really quick. Okay. <laughs> um, I know it has something to do with like superheroes or like yeah, a I think it's like heroes. the Renegade are like humans with abilities, but I okay. To be honest, the synopsis confuses me, so I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> yeah. So it's about, renegades are humans with extraordinary abilities, um, and they've come from the ruins of crumbled society to establish peace, peace and order. Um, and so they remain a symbol of courage to everyone except the villains they once overthrew. So Nova is the main character, and she hates the renegades. And Adrian is a renegade boy who believes in justice. So I believe it is like a an enemies to lovers uh -huh. uh, sort of fantasy mm. romance. And I am very, very excited for it. <laughs> and it's young adult. Yes, it is young adult. It's a hefty book too. So it's good that we have like three months to get through it. <laughs> Although it's already December. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're discussing Moxie. Um, do we want to go through like our, our um, non-spoilery thoughts in case anyone has tuned in that hasn't finished it yet? Mm, good that idea. Good. All right. So, what's the order, Cassie? Katrina, Emma, me. Okay. Okay. Oh, Ooh, sorry. Almost lost a bit. <laughs> 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 um, and we have to remember. Um, unfortunately, Red wasn't able to make it with us tonight. Yes. Life happened, so we will just do um, a bit of a run through of her thoughts as well. Um, but I ended up loving Moxie. I think I gave it five out of five stars. Um, I started out really enjoying it. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to describe the start for me. It like <laughs> it was enjoyable, but it was super gripping. But then when things start happening and like kind of the whole high school situation gets more intense, um, and the Moxie kind of revolution is in full swing. It was just so amazing. I loved it so much. And I liked how the different friendships that came through the whole revolution as well, like unsuspecting people, like getting in touch and becoming friends. It was just such a really, I don't know, heartwarming read and empowering. And it was amazing. I loved it. I absolutely agree. I also give it five out of five stars. I'm pretty sure anyone who knows me knows that I love Moxie with all of my heart. Um, it was, it's just so empowering and so important for young readers. And uh, again, like I just love how supportive all of the girls in this book are. They're just so wonderful and kind to each other. And I think they have such an important message. And I just, I love, I love being a Moxie girl. I consider myself a Moxie girl. And it is a fabulous, fabulous novel. And I couldn't recommend it enough. Mm -hmm. Cute. Um, I'm trying to find what I actually gave it. And I can't find the book off my good reads. But I did read it. I promise. I think I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. If I didn't, it was like a 4.5, 4 out of 5 stars. Because I did really, really like it. As of right now, I would say 5. 
but mm-hmm. you know how life changes when you yes. <laughs> are just thinking back on a book and aren't like currently in it. But I really liked it. I also really liked how what I think it was Katrina who said like how we watch all these those friendships like reform or form or mm-hmm. you know form differently. I really really loved that. I loved the um, the ending person that's involved. That was one of my favorite things. Yeah, I remember texting at least Emma and Ray. Yeah, you definitely texted me. And I was like, I need to call something because I'm pretty sure I'm right. And that was. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, I, I found it very like, um, very real, realistic for a high school story about standing up for what you think when everyone else doesn't get it. I like her lack of, of, you know, ability to do it at first to growing into it. I felt like that was really real. And oh my God, it just, yeah, it was good. I liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, do one of you guys want to summarize Red? Okay. So Red basically, I feel had the same opinions as all of us. I think this might be one of the only live shows where we've all had like very, very consistent thoughts, which is super cool. <laughs> uh, but Red also gave it five out of five stars and she loved it and felt it was very empowering and just loved watching all of these girls come together to fight the sexism in their school, which I highly agree with. <laughs> oh, one of my fa- other f- like favorite things, non-spoilery, I, th- I hope, I'm going to try to do this non-spoilery, was the the involvement of the male love interest and like, yeah. how that evolves <laughs> into everything. I thought that they did that really, really well. I 100% agree. I seriously think Moxie is one of, sorry, I'm just like taking a picture. I see that. I'm trying to fix my hair. (laughs) Um, I genuinely think that Moxie has one of the healthiest relationships in YA because Seth and um, Viv are just like so supportive of each other. And even though they butt heads sometimes, like they still listen to each other and they're like Mm -hmm. never like, they never put one above the other. Like they both yeah. recognize that they're both important people. And I just, I love them together so much. I know. Yes. And they're just really open-minded on what the other person's like yes. thoughts are, but also open-minded enough to acknowledge them and change their own beliefs if, if need be type thing. And I just thought it was, I just really like seeing them grow individually and together. I think it worked really well because they weren't super dependent on each other, yes. but the book, they didn't become obsessive with each other and like would have died without each other. But like, they <laughs> and I think brought the best out of each other when they were together, mm-hmm. which what I, I think. think it be. Oh, go ahead. Finish your sentence. <laughs> yeah. I finished now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was going to say, I think the one of the things that this, per, I, it's like something that is kind of one of my pet peeves about why and maybe in other ones, but why is what I read the most, but you just get this relationship. And once they're in the relationship, they tend to like, have everything else melt away and like all that's important is the individual who they're in the relationship mm-hmm. with and themselves. And in this book, I felt like we really got to delve into all of these other friendships and people that were surrounding this couple. And the couple almost was like a side story to the main thing, which I really liked because it wasn't about, it wasn't a love story, even though there was a love interest in it. I think I thought that that was really great. No, yeah, I not. totally agree. I think it's definitely not like I I would not consider this like a romance the way I consider other um I consider other YA books romances. Like it, it was an addition to the story, but it didn't overtake it and it wasn't oversaturated. Like it really was just like a complementary element mm-hmm. that fueled the story. And I think it was done so well. There were definitely issues that we can get into later. Yeah. I have some. But <laughs> but in general I really, really like it. Okay, so um, are we ready to jump into spoilers? I think that really concludes like the majority of spoiler-free thoughts. Um, so just so you guys know, again, you can either use the live chat bar to ask questions or you can tweet us at Bibliothon, and we'll be monitoring both of those to answer all of your questions and discuss with you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so couple in here already yeah i see um which so which uh a reader's world asks which protest the stars and hearts on hands the bathrobes was your favorite to read can i pick the last one or is it other than the last you can one? totally pick the last one but okay so <laughs> i read this book a lot during my lunch break and i'm a substitute teacher so like <laughs> i was in classrooms <laughs> 
<laughs> the classroom setting quite mm. frequently reading this book, sometimes in high school, sometimes in elementary. Like, I mean, it doesn't matter, but because I do K through 12. But this particular scene, I was with high schoolers when I was reading mm. it. Like, they were actually even in the classroom um, mm. as I read that scene. And I had to stop reading it partway through because I was getting <laughs> choked up. And I was like, the substitute <laughs> teacher isn't allowed to cry in front of the students because I'll die. I'll be murdered by the <laughs> high schoolers. But... <laughs> So I stopped reading it and then I read it later at like my lunch break or maybe right after school. I don't remember which, but like what <laughs> it was just, I like had chills reading the scene where they finally all, and like the anticipation where everyone is like, not quite sure if they're going to do it yet too. Oh, like that part. Yeah. 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 That, yeah, that <laughs> was the part where I, I was reading it and it was when I think I texted you and I was like, I'm pretty sure it's her. <laughs> <laughs> and I was at school and, or at work, but yeah. Oh my God. And it just uh, still have chills. I know. I cried. At the, I like got really choked oh. up at that part too. <laughs> and I got so many tears because I was just like, yes, all of the, yes, all of these girls and guys as well coming yes. together. Like, yes. Yeah. And it was so for like, in particular because I was in high school that day it was really surreal to watch mm-hmm. like reading this book the entire time I kept reading it at lunch breaks while in the classroom or during you know sometimes when I have the older students I can actually read while they're in class because they're just doing like a handout mm-hmm. but so I'd be sitting there and like looking at these kids and being in this and reading it and it was surreal it was felt too close almost <laughs> to home. it was crazy Kaz, what was your favorite scene? Oh, I think I have to agree with that one. It's just basically for everything that Cassie said. But in addition, Sorry. I like the more subtle protests. I really like the bathrobe one because I just think they were just like such a snarky response to the dress codes. And yeah. it was like, obviously like the protest at the very end is very much um, had a, I don't know, it was a much bigger statement, but that one was just like more subtle and they were just like... <laughs> mm-hmm kind of saying F you to the teachers and I like that. <laughs> yeah. I would say that that one is my second favorite, but I did really also enjoy their, um, the, the thing that they did where they all went to the girls only yes. like thing. Like the bank. I almost forgot about it. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called, but, um, was it the, the like second the- bake sale? No. Oh, it wasn't like the well, proper bake sale, but yeah. They did have a bake sale, and then that was... Oh, that's right. Yeah, and so they that's weren't allowed they to do the bake sales anymore. And then yes. they went to, like, that, like, sort of kind of, like, art collective, like, yeah. meeting off campus where, like, they, like, sold stuff, and they were drinking, and it was just, like, yes, so supportive and wonderful, and it was just all about these girls from different cliques coming together. And that, I feel, is, like, a really groundbreaking scene where yeah. we start to see these friendships really form. Yeah, yeah, and like a Reader's World mm-hmm. says in the chat, like they were just raising money for the girls' soccer team because like they weren't getting the support they needed from the school, and it's just so wonderful. Yeah. And I just, I also love like from a writing YA perspective and not just this story perspective, I liked how they dealt with drinking age, uh, drinking underage. Like they, while they were still able to do the things that, you know, that's kind of not allowed and like, there's still some stuff that they're like nervous about, but they still did it and they were still being safe about it. Like, I think that that's a perfect way to write that, like Mm -hmm. without terrifying kids, but also, you know, making sure that they're setting a good example. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause I'm trying to be the adult now. (laughs) Like no one took it too far because I think that would have been totally inappropriate for the circumstances as well, but they were all like, they were all doing it in a respectful way and to have fun because they were, you know, meeting all like, re-meeting all these people and just like yeah. bonding with yeah. each other and supporting mm-hmm. each other so it was like still obviously a little bit naughty but at the same time they did it in a <laughs> just having a, really- a good time <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like they also <laughs> met multi- i think don't they drink multiple times throughout the story or did i make that up is there uh, more than one scene if there's not more than one scene there's at least more than one person who says like oh no i'm sober or i'm i'm driver like they did yeah. that too at the same time. Yeah. Well, I'm walking home, I'm not driving, you know? Yes, like, yes, that was it. They were they some of them chose to walk home. Yeah. So I, I think it really was handled with care because there are teens who do drink. It happens. Um, but I think it was right. represented responsibly in this book. Yeah. 
So I thought uh, that that was really good of, of Jennifer. How do you say yeah. her last name? Matu. Matu. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, oh, I really like what uh, Jenny for Ev says is that it was a space where they ignored their clicks, which is like, such yes. a good point because it was like, even though like they, I mean, throughout the book, like they do, I, I distinctly remember a scene where it was like, the cheerleaders are sitting with like the band geeks or something like th they did really start to merge at the end. But, um, although everyone had their own respective friend groups, like it, it wasn't a place where that was, um, like a, a value to them. And it was really just mm -hmm. about supporting each other. It mm -hmm. felt like, um, breakfast club, but on yeah. feminist steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. Like totally focused on feminist ideals and ideologies and all that stuff. But like, breakfast club <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think one of my favorite protests was definitely the bathroom scene because it was still in the very beginnings of moxie where like Viv wasn't sure if people were participating in it and like people were conflicted on it like I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna do this or not and then I just love the moment where the teacher tells one of the students to take off her bathroom yes. and she's wearing a bikini underneath it and she's like I was covered up I was just following the dress code it was like so oh. iconic. It was so funny. It was so perfect. <laughs> Do you remember which character that is that does um, it? I, is it the girl? It, it's one of the girls. It, it's it's not the one. It's I not can't her remember best friends. Her, name. her name's Kate. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of like yeah. the. So, so it's, it's um, one of the group. The best friend, and then there were two other friends that were really okay. Nice yeah. Group. Okay. Yeah. She says, I wasn't sure if I was following the East Rockport dress code because it's so weird and unclear, you know? So I decided to be safe and cover myself with this bathrobe so as to not distract any of our precious male students. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's uh, so funny. Freaking love it! Yeah, there are just so many great, great girl moments in this book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, so good. Uh, somebody had a good question. Uh, Lindsay Berry said, is this, it, uh, this is for when we get into spoiler ter territory. What was your favorite scene in the book in general? Mm. I think my favorite favorite is that last protest. Like I, I, it's just so powerful and it makes such a statement for the, like, you know, the male and female students. Like it is, a moment of unity and power and I just feel like it, it really is like a strong strong point in the book where like I'm crying and I'm laughing and I'm happy and I'm proud and it evoked so much emotion in me that I think it's definitely my favorite favorite scene mm -hmm. and most importantly you get to watch the, the principal like not know how the fuck to handle it it was amazing that was, <laughs> yeah, oh, that was great <laughs> um I think I would pick um my favorite favorite scene okay so i actually really really enjoyed watching oh it's been too long i don't remember all the names what's the main character's name viv viv, viv. i really actually enjoyed watching viv kind of point out seth's problems yes like, when he thought that he was doing everything right and she was like ah no and then I think that's when they get into the fight that the yeah, scene that I'm thinking of. Um, I really, really enjoyed the scene because not only was she able to stand up for herself within a relationship where she really likes the guy, and I think that's really important, but also mm -hmm. watching, you know, no one can get it right all the time. And so Seth's really trying, but I also liked getting to watch him not only react negatively but then later come back and realize that he did fuck up and like oh i've realized my like not my place is in under but my place is in like i've realized what i was doing wrong and now i'm gonna try to fix it or try to do yep. it better next time. yeah i totally agree i think that's my favorite thing about seth like all throughout the story is that he he definitely has like the emotional intelligence that a lot of his male peers don't have but then you know there are times when he slips up and although he has an initial reaction of like, I'm just trying to do the right. Like not thing. all men. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When like he has that like initial reaction, um, he learns from it and he really does like consider Viv's viewpoint and he's able to admit like, I was wrong in this circumstance and I appreciate you pointing that out to me. Like that is just like such a mature thing to see. And it's so important for, I think all readers to experience, you know, that, that, situation of okay like let me listen to this person's perspective and evaluate if like you know i'm wrong in this situation if i am let me admit it and learn from my mistakes 
Yes. Uh, uh, Jenny Ferez really quickly asked to remind her what they've pointed out about Seth because she's forgetting. So I think if I remember correctly, sexual assault. I think. Yeah. So he he basically like because he's a good guy and the friends that he's ha- he's hanging out with are good guys. He's he basically says like even though that sexual assault thing might have happened like also not all men do that and so like it's kind of quick to assume he basically says like maybe you shouldn't believe the girl right away because yes. and yeah. like like calling her out almost for making generalizations about yeah that. generalizing Cause, yeah. Cause, yeah, because she's basically saying, like, she kind of does generalize and say, like, a lot. Of, she says, like, the men or the boys in the high school suck. And he's like, but not all of us. Like, point <laughs> us out. And she was like, that's not the point. The point is that, like, the majority of people of boys here are doing this, are are doing the butt pinching and the, you know, all yeah. of those, like, games that they're playing throughout the thing. And, and this was, like, also right after she had found out that her best friend had been assaulted by the high school uh the jock mm-hmm. like yeah. in the hallway and so she was like super angry about it and then he w- he was trying to be like but not me and she was like not about it's not you the yeah. <laughs> that's the thing like a, that's a conversation that happens a lot where um mm. the guys feel kind of they get defensive about this like being called out in general that men do these things where it's like well enough of them do and it's a big problem so it needs to be talked about so it's not about you feeling bad that people are calling out guys for doing xyz yeah it's something <laughs> yeah, that like but, as a whole everyone needs to change the men- mentality about, mentality about yeah yeah and it's like you know, it's okay to be like, I recognize that I don't do those things but that's not the time for you to disclose that like you can say to yourself like I know I don't sexually assault women. That's a pretty clear thing that you either know that you do or you don't do, but you can condemn the other people that do. Like, it's yeah. not that hard of a concept. Yeah. Um, but while we're I, on the topic – oh, no, you continue. Oh, I was what just going to talk about some favorite things, but if you've got something else, go I just wanted to say, like, while we're on the topic of, like, calling people out on things, I really loved it when – oh, I don't remember her name. I think it was, like, Kiara, possibly. Um mm. I think she was on like the soccer team or the volleyball team. Um, the friend. Which, yeah, yeah, yeah. The not who was like friends before and then became friends la- uh, later again. Yeah, she yeah. Was, like, the um, black girl. Yes, yes, the black girl. I loved that she called Viv out on how her like on like white feminism. Like I really, yes. really she's like, well, it's different for black women and Liv. She again, she like had that moment of like being a little defensive, and then she really listened to her perspective and learned from it. And I was like, this is so important to include. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is like what I mean is like this book not only dealt with feminism, but dealt with all of the. I I like don't can't even comprehend how Jennifer Matu did it <laughs> because she like took all of the issues that happened in feminism generally and broadly and then broke them all down to make it into a YA novel. How mm-hmm. did she do that? So easy, like so smoothly too. It, it didn't I mean, feel yeah. like she was teaching you anything, you know? Yes. I it's totally agree with that. Yeah, exactly. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I can say with confidence that this book definitely preaches intersectional feminism. Like there, it is so well-rounded and, you know, I mean, you have Lucy who is um, Hispanic and she's at the forefront of Mox. So you know what I mean? And it's not like, it's just like these minimal side characters that are thrown in for diversity points, you know, like they, they all have very valid contributions to the Moxie movement. And that's so important to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> um, do you guys um, have any complaints, frustrations? Uh, um, I think the one thing that like changed, so like, I don't feel the same anymore. I feel like at the beginning, I was like, this is like so much shit from the guys' end. Like, I thought it was like a little oversaturated to start. And then I thought back to like high school because like guys don't, guys in my college don't act like this. But I thought it was a high school and I'm like, damn, a lot of guys did make sandwich jokes and, like, all of this misogynistic crap that I didn't realize. Mm-hmm. So originally mm-hmm. I thought it felt a little inauthentic, but when I really considered it, I'm like, I don't feel like this is exaggerated at all. Like, I really do think it's a good representation of how teenage boys can act. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I 
I like have a hard time knowing if things like that are realistic because I went to a school where I graduated with a class <laughs> of 83 and we were all art students so we were all fucking nerds and no. most of the population of the school was also LGBTQ plus so like <laughs> we didn't have a lot of like we didn't have any jocks on campus at all because we didn't have sports so like <laughs> that's gone and we also had like maybe four straight dudes on the campus in total wow. like I'm just saying like, <laughs> so it, it was not a, the same experience. So I have no idea what, like, normal high school was like. And I'm just very glad to have my experience. But, like, that part, I didn't know how to feel about it. So I just, like, went with it. And I was like, eh, mm-hmm. if it's over dramatic, then, like, maybe it's over dramatic. But who knows? Mm-hmm. But I, um, <laughs> the one thing that I did find a little annoying was that, as YA does, because <laughs> it's always... <laughs> <sighs> always a thing mm-hmm. we have like instantaneous oh no not just instantaneous crush and love like you know but we also had the main character who's like never kissed anyone and never had a boyfriend <laughs> and never been into boys at all and not interested and too nervous to talk to them and all the things and then the cool guy comes into town and immediately boom they're in a relationship within like three weeks and i'm just like how did you I don't understand. And it's like, I mean, that's a pet peeve of mine all the time, though. It's like, why do we always have to have this character who, like, has never talked to boys? Like, oh, I'm so scared of them. Like, no, I just want, like, a, I just, uh. Anyways, no, I know. I mean, I, I had so many guy friends in high school that when I read stuff like this, I'm like, I, I know these people exist, but, like, there's just so many of them in YA. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And, I mean, I know that, like, it's, I'm not saying that we should get rid of them all together, but like there it's just that's every female protagonist of YA almost. It's like either ones who would uh, not not interested in men as in like LGBTQ, but not interested in boys to begin with and then they find a crush or like too nervous to talk to guys and so they get like freak out every time they have a crush and so they've never <laughs> been in a relationship, which was her. That was her character and she yeah. annoys me even more than the first option. Like, I remember having crushes in year three. Me like, too. Yeah. I kissed my first boy in pre-K. I'm not yes, kidding. Yes, me too. <laughs> no, I do. Oh, my God. Uh, me and my friend literally cornered a boy in the bag room. Yes, and- I did that. Yes, we have the same story. Mine was in pre-K. <laughs> we were playing tag, and I was it, and I tagged <laughs> him and then grabbed his shirt and kissed him. <laughs> And he said I had cooties, and I said, I don't care. And that was me in first grade. <laughs> it's, uh, it's yeah, I think I think girls who are not so, like, I, I think the whole trope of, like, the girl isn't interested in, t- in anyone until, like, the one boy who is at the, the protagonist or, like, the, the love interest of that story, it's, like, very overdone. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, I was gonna um, briefly just because I have a couple of favorite things. I was trying to think of a favorite scene, but I've highlighted a, a couple that I just want to talk about. One yeah. of which is when Seth asks if he can kiss Viv. Oh, <laughs> yes! I think that's that maybe. Good. I think that's like the third time I've seen that in YA. Yeah, and I've read like almost four hundred YA books. I know, and it's just like yeah. even even with a kiss, consent is good and I think necessary especially for first ones with you know, and especially that. written in a story where most of the people reading are that age like yes. it's again like the same thing with how she wrote all of this feminist you know basically feminist theory into a story that doesn't feel like you're being educated but you are absolutely being educated yeah. during it and like oh my god and so just that just that little, little tiny, little tiny question that was put in. It's just like, you're teaching women, mostly women, because mostly women are the ones who are going to read this, yeah. but mostly women that that is something that you should, you know, enjoy, want, and expect in that mm-hmm. order, probably, because yeah. first you have to know that you want it and need it in order to want, expect it. But yeah, I think it's yeah. so important. No, no, I totally agree that I remember reading that scene and I was like, yes, I'm so excited that consent was actually included. I know, exactly, because he's like, Vivian, I want to kiss you. Then a paragraph of her being like, oh my God, in her head. And then he's like, no, oh, <laughs> can I kiss you? <laughs> I just I just loved it so much. And I really like that we have 
a romantic interest who isn't who was like I think such a good guy that you like yes. after like you're not like fantasizing about Edward Cullen here we're fantasizing about someone who's actually going to treat you right and then yes. I think that's great to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it sets realistic um, expectations for teens like when we see relationships like this you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly it it's a, you know. um, and I think the only other one it's just a re like a really small moment but it's when they do have that arts and crafts show thingy in the hall mm -hmm. um, for the soccer the girls soccer team and Viv says um, I think it's just like everyone's dancing and enjoying themselves and she's just like it occurs to me that this is what it means to be a feminist not a humanist or an equalist or whatever but a feminist it's not a bad word after today it might be my favorite word because really all it is is girls supporting each other and wanting to be treated like human beings in a world that's always finding ways to tell them they're not and I was just like I think I cried at that because I was just I like got so while you were reading that <laughs> so good yeah because Maybe so, oh, it was just a really powerful moment for her to make that realization and just everything that she said I was just like yes no girl, I yes. totally totally agree and I think there really is like such a negative connotation that comes with identifying as a feminist now like it, especially from women like I feel like sometimes women can be the harshest critics of considering yourself a feminist and it's not a bad word whatsoever and it's an amazing thing to call yourself a feminist and I, I really feel like this is a book that can be a wonderful gateway to a lot of young teens who are looking to learn more and are maybe discovering themselves as a feminist. I love it so much. <laughs> and I, I really like as well that it included that conversation in the book with Viv's best friend Claudia who does think that feminism is a bad yes. word. Like she's very like against the Moxie revolution but obviously after things get going she actually realizes what it really means. Yeah, like, it's so perfect. <laughs> it's just it like yeah. has every bit of like all right. every bit good of the bad yeah like it has all this stuff that gets said all the time about feminism it has it all in there like mm -hmm. not just the big scary stuff like the jock who gets away with sexually assaulting people like not just that but the little stuff too the girl yeah. saying no I don't want to be a feminist because uh, you know that <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Claudia. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. There's actually a, a question from Lindsay Berry that says, which character had the best character development? And my immediate thought was Claudia, because I feel like she does grow so much from when Viv first introduces the concept of feminism to her to the very end of the story. Like, I feel like she really, her, her ideals surrounding feminism really changed throughout the story as a result of Moxie. And I find that really powerful. No, I, I absolutely agree because I think it's a lot of people like it's it's a kind of situation that a lot of girls will find themselves in because of the stigma behind feminism. And I thought it was really important to have that character growth in the book to show that it's it's not all bad, guys. It's actually a really positive movement. <laughs> like, I totally agree. I also really loved the character sort of character development that we didn't really get to see, but of the popular girl. What is her yes. name? Yes. Is I, it I Emma? Emma? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Emma. Because I remember, okay, so in yeah, middle Emma. school, I knew a girl named Emma that was very popular and very, like, you know, mm -hmm. a, like, cheerleader in middle school and had all the boys, like, fawning over her and stuff. And her name was Emma, and I immediately made this person that girl <laughs> that I went to middle school with that I don't know anymore. Like, I've no, she's irrelevant to my life now but I just made her her and then getting to watch and realize like oh shit I think that she's the one that did the thing and then also is yeah oh my god it was perfect I just like it made me so happy to watch like this girl who feels like on the other side but then ends up being 100% a part of the movement yeah, I think Emma's character development is also really important, too, because although we don't really get to see it, like, her character is still such an important part of the story. And mm -hmm. that transformation is, like, a huge catalyst for the end, um, for the end results of Moxie, you know what I yeah. mean? And, yeah. like, what, listening to her, I think it's her speech at the yeah. rally, where she's, like, talking about how like what happened and also like the way that she or maybe it's Viv thinking about it 
I don't remember if it's her or if it's Viv, but whichever part it is, it's like she's talking about how like those flirtatious and never a yes, but like always smiling thing that happens mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. a fear thing. And oh my God, I was just like, it's the life that you do every time you go to a bar. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. And I, in an awful way. Another yeah, another thing I also really appreciated about Emma and this character and her growth is that it also brings in that discussion, like that there are certain ideas of what a feminist could be and what, like, like, because Viv has these preconceived notions based on her opinions of Emma from afar. She doesn't know the girl, that mm -hmm. she probably isn't a feminist or part of the Moxie movement because of how she looks and how she acts and because she's popular, blah blah blah. Right. But it's like these these things affect all women, all women. So it's like, it, it really made Vivian kind of take a step back and reconsider what she thought about yeah. Emma. And, and even girls. like watching her ha do the speech that happens <laughs> at the assembly, the yeah, principal made her do. Like, yeah. oh, it was just, once, once you like, I, I honestly would love to reread it and just <laughs> look for all the Emma things. Because yes. it would be a totally different perspective after knowing that she's already been almost raped, um, attempted raped by the dude. Mm -hmm. And she's, like, forced into the principal assembly thing. And, like, all this stuff that, like, was yeah. not truly in her control, but everyone seems to think that she's, like, on the boy's side. Yes. I think yeah. it would be amazing to reread that. Mm hmm Exactly. Um, okay, can we talk about the principal though? Oh, oh my god, what a bitch! <laughs> this the worst, the absolute worst. Oh, it just makes I, me. Like, I, I, it, it sucks what? because like people like that exist in. Yeah, it's not uncommon. It's you know so what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the worst. I like how Jenna is, is just like barf. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah literally the worst and you know it's like and with the principal being the um the father of the right wasn't he like the father of the yes. the, the football player yes. like that that happens too yeah you know i know I mean? like it's and so very stereotypical but like but it's still a thing. Yeah. And like maybe not all of these things combine to make one real person, but all of the individual parts happen. Like just the fact that the principal had a son who went to his school means that that son was going to get away with things better. I mean, I had one at my high school who honestly should have been suspended multiple times, but he didn't get suspended. He just got detention and like, I'm not saying that he should have been expelled. He wasn't doing anything like fucking sexually assaulting people in the hallway, but yeah. he was like vandalizing shit and stuff like that. Like, yeah, kids who have people who are in charge at the same school, even ones who have people in charge in different schools, get away with stuff. I mean, I'm a daughter of cops, so I also know that privilege. I've experienced it personally yeah. because I've gotten pulled over before and like, accidentally pulled out my dad's uh, business card and gotten away like, without a <laughs> ticket. Like, I've done that. I know how to play this system, but that doesn't mean it's fair. Yeah, exactly. Like, because it just shows how having power really does affect how much people can get away with stuff. And I just like that at the end of the day, he didn't get away with it all. And that principle was gone by the end of it. So it was... It was yeah, it was yeah. Like, I'd love to see what would happen charges being brought against him although i mean well i don't think anything really serious happened but obviously yeah, like, they're still that school mm -hmm. so i would say that, the i mean i would he did didn't he get did he get suspended or expelled um the principal got fired i remember that i don't know let me see but i mean the Probably out of the options, the most likely to be charged would be the assault that happens by, mm, to yeah. Claudia, not yeah. the attempted yeah. rape because it happened too long ago and because she did get away, which is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, yeah, uh, charges is a whole other story because then you got to prove to a judge that something actually yeah. happened, which and never fucking happens. It was realistic as well, the fact that, like, I don't think... 
there was a lot of charges that happened at the end of it. But like, it's a small step, which I think in the scheme of the book is realistic. Like they didn't yes. completely from the whole country because of everything that happened. Right. Which, like, which wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. Right. But seeing those small steps happening is really kind of encouraging and I think hopeful in more realistic yeah. settings. Like, and like realizing that their um their last rally walkout got put onto national television, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it, it does give the opportunity to like this small town doesn't mean it's only mattering to this small town. This could make things bigger and more important throughout national uh, the nation, but like it doesn't mean it will, but it has the opportunity to, I guess. Yeah. That's really great. At least to give girls the opportunity to be like, yes! <laughs> Fight the patriarchy! Yeah, boom. <laughs> I have that written on my body. Okay. <laughs> um, there's it. actually a really good question in here. Let me just find it. Um, okay. Cough. <laughs> Genesis said, cough, American politics. Cough. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so Sylvie says, what did you think of the mom, her involvement or that, or lack thereof, and the oh, part yeah. with that jerky boyfriend and her reaction to Viv in the Moxie movement? I think this is a really important part of Moxie that can easily get looked over. Wait, sorry. I think my connection or someone's connection freaked out there. What was the question right. again? Okay, so, um... Sylvie says, what did you think of the mom, her involvement or lack thereof, the part with the jerky boyfriend, and her reaction to Viv and the Moxie movement? Um, I have an opinion about the boyfriend and the mom. I honestly felt like the boyfriend-mom side plot was kind of irrelevant. I mean, Yeah, I agree. I, mm -hmm. like, I, did, I, mean, I felt like what they were trying to do was kind of confusing because – First, it's – at first, and actually for most of the part, it feels kind of like the daughter is just being a snarky teenager, and that's the end of that story. Like, that's kind of what it felt like to me. And so maybe it was like a Viv growing up plot line and not really about the boyfriend plot line. But because they bring up the fact that he is – whereas the mom is like – has been super liberal, and she's like – she was a moxie girl in the past and all this stuff, and he turns out to be a Republican – I thought we might get a little bit more of like a conversation about grown up politics. Mm -hmm. but like yeah. none of that really happened. And he ended up being a good guy, which is like honestly I kinda liked that part because just because you put the word Republican into somebody's identification doesn't mean they're a bad person. They could yes. very well be a good person. Yeah. But I just was kinda confused by like what the point was of having these multiple times when he gets brought up separately and then the few times when he's actually like important where the mom like lets her know that he stayed over and so I just want you to know before you come home like I thought that that was a good parent thing yeah. to do like mm. an interesting plot line for that but I I felt like he was altogether on mostly in, irrelevant yeah I totally get what you're saying I think my feelings about the mom are more focused on how like she used to be part of the riot girls and then like that kind of like I guess died down over the years and like that wasn't really it was something that both her and Viv had in common but they didn't really talk about it because Viv was afraid of her mom's reaction I think that was a very um interesting part of their relationship but I I agree that like the boyfriend like it wasn't the most important part <laughs> yeah. that was part of what felt weird too I think for the mom and Viv relationship because so Viv's mom reminded me of my mom and mm. Viv reminded me less of me, but like they had this great relationship and all that stuff. And I have a great relationship with my mom, or at least I really did when I was in high school. I mean, we were, I told my mom everything. Like I did not keep a lot of secrets from her in high school. Mm -hmm. And my mom was really cool about like liberal and, you know, feminism and all this stuff. So like, it was weird reading this about this girl who has this great relationship with her mom who used to be a moxie girl and then she wants to start moxie and then she's afraid to tell her mom about it. It didn't feel it didn't feel authentic to me because that was not my authentic experience. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it isn't someone else's though. But like I was kind of confused really about why Viv would be would be worried that her mom would not be okay with it because if anything I felt like initially her mom would 
uh, maybe be nervous the same way that she was in the end when she found out about it because of their small town and all the stuff. But also, like, I don't know. I just felt like she would be supportive in what Viv wanted to do at the end of the day. So, Mm. like, I was a little surprised that Viv didn't tell her mom. I agree. Yeah, it was weird. I think part of it is, like, Viv's own insecurity as, like, she had always, you know, she really was, like, the good girl who, like, visited her grandparents. She always did everything she was supposed to do. And this was the first thing that she was really doing that was somewhat rebellious, that she was, like, going behind the school board and doing it anonymously, even though, like, they were, you know, the whole town was talking about how, like, this isn't something that girls should be doing. So I guess she, you know, with that small town mentality, maybe she thought that it would apply to her mom because, like, it had been so long since she was involved in the Riot Girl movement. But I also agree. I think that, like, Viv could have told her mom earlier in the story and, like, it, it would have been all okay in the end. Yeah. I yeah. think as well, perhaps it might have been a way for... Viv to feel more independent about yeah, doing it. I was it. just thinking. Yeah, well, she does say that at one point. She was like, she, she says something about that about her friends and I think about her mom at one point about how, like, this is hers. And she yeah. wants yeah. to keep hers for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Which, I, which I do understand because I think yeah. if her mom had gotten involved, maybe she wouldn't have felt so kind of confident in her own strengths. Right. Oh, it's right. part of her character development for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because eventually she does realize that, that it isn't just hers. It's every girl's blah, 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 blah. All the good yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. And, like, I mean, it was a very easy way to make an absentee mom who is a good mom by making her a nurse. Like, I think that that was a good choice. An easy choice, but a good choice to make her a nurse so that she's gone all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because nurses have crazy schedules. So, like, I mean, I think that was a good choice for her to make this, like, really great mom, but who is also not there a lot. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Very Ooh, Genesis wants to talk about the grandparents. Oh, goodness. Um, Can someone cute. remind me, like, what their role was? Because I'm pretty sure it was, like, they were very, very <laughs> traditional. Yeah, I yes, think they did have like, very traditional views and it was kind of like, I think the, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think there was a conversation where um, perhaps between Viv and her mom where they were like, it's not because of how traditional their views are and how old they are. Maybe it's not worth trying to persuade them otherwise. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that a conversation so, that happened Yeah, they, they do discuss that. I think after Viv tells her mom about Moxie, they right. together have a conversation about their grandparents. I mean, her grandparents. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think that that is the general sense. I actually really liked the grandparents because they're like <laughs> good, happy yeah. people who are like cute and love their grandkid and love their daughter. And I mean, they don't agree with everything that they do. Well, the mom and yeah. eventually the daughter, the granddaughter, but like, but they still love their family like I felt like it was a very good representation of how you can deal with family how family members who disagree on things should handle each other I guess yeah like and it's not to say that all adults will be able to do that but like (laughs) there are ways to deal with your family members who do not agree with you on things yeah and still have a, a good relationship if they also put love and you know all that stuff first too if they're being assholes that's a whole different story to you but like just because they're you know politically (laughs) ill-aligned does not mean that you have to like that's the only reason you have to cut them off I guess because if they still love you and all that stuff you can still have a good relationship and just kind of like let that part go let it go (laughs) I think that that was it yeah, really. topic, especially since they are your family so it's kind of like figuring out what you feel the most comfortable doing in that situation and what what you're going to let slide what you're just not going to discuss with those people to yep. not put that relationship at detriment i think that is something mm-hmm. that, believe yeah. me i do that every holiday <laughs> <laughs> i know what not to talk about <laughs> in order to not cause an issue yeah <laughs> so annoying. Mm. Uh, but yeah i, I I think that they were, I think it was a a perfect amount of them too. Like they didn't overwhelm the story. 
there was only there was not very many parts with them, but the parts that they were in also felt really authentic to me. Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. Could we also talk about the short little period, bless you, of time when we met Lucy's parents or grandma or? Oh, oh was her grandma goodness, what was that? Because oh, she got that? she got suspended because of her involvement with yes. the banks. Yes. Yeah, Amping up with and the, the grandma almost doesn't let her in. It was so funny. I loved oh it. Oh my goodness! I loved every I minute. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, it's that so was cute in my opinion. opinion. <gasps> and the grandma is like side eye side eyeing um uh Viv. Viv the entire time. She's like, "What are you doing here? <laughs> what is that? Like, should I even let you in my house?" It's so cute, and and it feels really real again. Like. All of the ways that the parent, most of the parents felt and like acted, felt pretty authentic. There was the the yeah. weirdest part to me was Viv's mom. Well, was really Viv, Viv, not her mom. Her mom also felt pretty real to me. But Viv's yeah. reaction to like what her mom would say felt re weird because if they have a good relationship, then whatever. But we already discussed that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I also like the scene where we meet um, Seth's parents, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. that. They, they give, they offer Viv alcohol, and she's like, what? <laughs> it was so oh, cute. Yeah, that's it's, right. like, so chill. Like, it's ridiculous. I mean, like, it's so <laughs> fun. chill. They remind me of my parents. Really? <laughs> so, I was just spending that entire scene laughing so hard. My parents are not artists. So, like, that was a big difference. Yeah. My parents are also like white. So, like, we didn't have that. But, like, <laughs> my mom would – my mom was so weird. Like, my mom <laughs> always asked me if I wanted a drink with dinner. And I was always like, not really. Alcohol tastes gross. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the same i wish it was the same <laughs> that's but. so funny yeah i really enjoyed that scene too i feel like this is one of the YA books that like adults actually play like a decent role like mm -hmm. they're not all dumb and underestimate teens like they're like actual characters yep. and they, they display a couple of different types of adulthood and i found mm -hmm. that really interesting yeah mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. Because obviously yeah. teenage, the teenage world, they are separated from it, but they're not completely yes. blind to what happens in, yeah. <laughs> in their I kids' totally world. So, yeah, I think that's... what you said, Emma, just now like, uh, really resonates with me on this particular point. It's like all the parents are different kinds of parents. Yeah. I, I really liked that because, yeah, not all parents act the same way with their children or, like, with their children's p friends and stuff like that. Like, I really liked – I didn't realize that I really liked that until you said it out loud, and I was like, oh, yeah, that, that was part of it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think that was an interesting part of the, the book. Um, Lindsay says, can we talk about the you're an asshole stickers? I have mixed feelings about them where I liked the final execution with them, but I also feel like they may have been too extra. And I feel like I felt similarly about it. I was like, eh, is this really the best way to go about things? Because it, <laughs> it, it was – liked it. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I liked it as well, but at the same time, it was something that could, like, my, in my thoughts, I was like, but what if it damages everyone's property, blah, blah, blah. Like, that was my thought. I was like, I think it was a good idea in theory, but it also had the potential to kind of undermine their message and, like, undermine their intentions behind it. Yeah. I, the, I, I think it's interesting. I think it is. It, it was down on the principal's car, and he's so mad. I, didn't <laughs> I, did, I mean, I was satisfied by that. <laughs> I didn't have any issue with the asshole stickers, but throughout the entire story, I kept questioning how she had so much money to pay and time to pay for copies, and then the stickers were the biggest part because stickers are fucking expensive. Have you ever tried to buy <laughs> stickers? They're expensive when you make your own and you design your own thing and then you bring... No, that shit's expensive. She did not have a job. How did she pay for that? Oh, I didn't even think about that. I think that was my biggest annoying. The paper, like printing the sheets of Moxie, wasn't that expensive, right? I mean, have you ever been to co like a uh, FedEx? It's literally like never. Okay. But I feel like I remember her saying something about it. Well, like, getting there would have been more expensive than doing it at home. 
Yeah. It, I don't, I, I mean. like it was only, like, a couple of cents, like, per, like. But zero. how many people are in this school? Because, like, did she only print out 20 copies? I was, yeah. I'm just It says it somewhere. The logistics of this don't make a lot of sense to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I mean, oh, like, maybe it's a, a. Because, okay, so let's see. Even in my school, where I only had a total of, like, 500 students at my school, let's say I want to do 200 copies for the 500 students because not everyone needs one, and you're only doing girls' bathroom anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So even 250, that's exactly half. So 250, 250 copies times, what, 20 cents a copy? Maybe even forty cents because it's colored. That's still fifty dollars each time. Warren, she said it, but I don't see it here. I mean, I'm not, I didn't mean for us to start, you know, researching. It. No, <laughs> I'm just now I'm just curious because it's a good point. But like fifty dollars for a high school student who doesn't have. Yeah, that's a lot of money. At the point, that's a lot of money to just like decide to blow in five seconds. Because the first time she does it, she literally like doesn't take her that long to decide to do it yeah and then like she does it a second time does she do it a third time plus the stickers yeah, there's or three, there's three editions of moxie at least three editions of moxie plus the fourth stickers right uh-huh well the the stickers might come with the edition but like stickers are like 80 cents a sticker or something crazy like that they're so expensive and she did it enough so that people could do, like, multiple of them. So she did so many stickers. And I'm also thinking if, like, because, like, there are, there are schools that have, like, thousands of students, not yeah. 500. So, like, in my head, I'm just like, how did you ex uh, have her? I think um, Lindsay says I think she had a whole bunch of Visa gift cards to pay for the stickers. And honestly, that's so, that's so specific that I'm like, that's probably right. Because I don't know what you <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe maybe she, like, had a bunch of Christmas money saved up. My sister yeah. manages to do that every year. She, like, like, saves up this, like, lots of, lots of, you know, Visa cash or, you know, mm -hmm. cash, and then she spends it throughout the year, and I'm always like, where did it all go in December? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone in, like, a day. But, yeah, so I didn't have an issue with the stickers particularly Just the price. At all. Just the, I was like, how, how are you affording all of this? Oh, so funny. Maybe that's my own stress coming out. <laughs> um, yeah. So I just want to go back to just briefly someone's comment. I think this was about Lucy. Um, Genesis G said, oh, my gosh, there was a scene I resonated so much with because um, she was scared to get in trouble because she was going to lose her scholarship. Yeah, the, I think that was yeah. Lucy when she was suspended because, like, yeah. and of the bake sale thing, which is another thing that I think is – was important to include because like yeah. there are reasons why people don't speak up and people don't mm -hmm. act out because there are consequences that can detriment them, which is something yeah. that we see like people not speaking up about so even perfect. more severe circumstances. <laughs> um, yeah, because something might happen and that could make them lose a job, lose a scholarship, yeah. which is sad. It's sad. <laughs> I'm, and then uh, so I look where Sylvie says the guy at the copy place is one of my favorite characters. He kept Viv's secrets and was like, "This is your best issue yet." At one point, he was oh, great. Yeah. maybe he gave her <laughs> that. No, I forgot <laughs> about him. It was so cute. <laughs> I know I loved him. I forgot about him, but he was good. He was such a a nice little side character to like enjoy at the same time. Yeah, I really like when books have that where it's like a completely irrelevant side character, but like they make the story interesting and like you you like they're really lovable. I love that stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. He reminded me of this seven not seven eleven a and pm a uh, cashier that I used to see a lot because I used to go to a and pm a lot <laughs> <laughs> near my house in Atascadero, and he his name was Aslan, like the lion from the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh my and I asked him one time, is your name based on a book? And he said, yeah, how'd you know? And I was like, because I've read it. I don't know. <laughs> it was cute. He was so nerdy. It was so great. It was fantastic. Oh, that was <laughs> so that's uh, why I imagined every time. <laughs> Somebody we, asked beforehand uh -huh. if we could fan cast the, if this was made into a movie, who would we cast? Oh, God, I'm the worst with fan Me casting. too, but. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Um, I don't even know. I don't even know who are people. I don't know. <laughs> if you guys have any, you should. Yeah, if us. you guys have fan casts, let me know. Yeah, um, I'm the one who's never am able to answer this question, to be honest. I'm like, I don't know. I can't just like sift through all of the celebrity faces in my head. I don't know. <laughs> and like remembering age and stuff, like, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, uh, this is hard. This is too hard. It's very hard. Because, so when people, like people, there are people who fan cast while they read and think of celebrities. But when I read a book, I think of real people in my life and like put them into the book. I don't so, think of real people. But oh, I, yeah, I do you have a very strong image of what they look like in my head. So when I'm trying to think of celebrities that look like them, I just really struggle. Oh, yeah. See, so, like, it depends on what kind of book. Because, like, for books like, um, you know, Throne of Glass, where they're all, or or I should say, A Court of, Myst- a court of, a court of whatever, Thorns and Roses, those okay. books are all about fairies, right? So I don't usually fan cast with real people because I more, like, cartoon them. They're, like, just right. cartoony people. Yeah, mm. I totally know what you mean. <laughs> but in real-life situations where it's, like, high school, then I usually fan cast based on, like, real-life experience and, like, who fits the bill. Sometimes they're not the right description. They're just like, who, who was like that person in my life? <laughs> like, char- uh, characterization wise, not like physicalness. I'm trying to look at like, actresses under 25 and whatnot, <laughs> but it's not okay. exactly working look out. Up, look up Zendaya because Lindsay Berry said Zendaya would be great to play Viv and I don't know who that is, so... Zendaya, oh my god, I, you know who Zendaya is? Okay, who is it? <laughs> you don't know Zendaya? She was on Shake It I Up. I her name. She played Rocky on Shake It Up. I know Shake It Up was like a little, like, I got the Shake It Up. Um, is Disney it just movie. like slightly too young for me? A slightly okay, let me, too I'm gonna young. look it up. Because I was getting too old. She was in the new Spider-Man movie. She's in another movie with Zac Efron. Oh, I know who that is. Okay, I know who that is. I, <laughs> oh, I, I would up. love to see Zendaya as Viv. <laughs> but see, I didn't watch Spider-Man. So, like, I didn't, not, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't either. No, I would love to see Zendaya as, um, as Viv. Yeah, I really she's like pretty, that fan cast. I can see her reflecting, in, reflecting in, in your glasses in your Google search. <laughs> <laughs> you can see her? <laughs> see her in my glasses. <laughs> I know I want. Oh yeah, I want your glasses, Emma. So bad. Thank are me. those from Forever Twenty One? Are they really? <laughs> Did you? Are they real prescription? No, they're fashion glasses. What <laughs> the heck? I want them, and then I want to put prescription into them. These are my real glasses, and then these are the fashion glasses that I got from Forever Twenty One. <laughs> Matt always makes fun of my nose, though. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's unfortunate. My grandma glasses is what gr- Matt calls me calls these, and I broke my other pair of prescription glasses. I like no. them in my sand. They were from Firmu though, so they were free because I got them for a promotion, and so did I. I got these for a promotion too, so I didn't feel that bad about it because like I didn't put any money into it. <laughs> and Firmu, for those of you watching, sorry, this didn't mean to turn into we're not sponsored, promise. But Firmu is great because it's only like twenty eight to thirty two dollars American. Uh, for prescription glasses, it's amazing. But yeah, Matt hates these glasses. He calls them my grandma glasses. I, <laughs> I need to go get my eyes checked again because it's been like a year and a half now, but I can't afford to get me glasses. So I'm just like, um, I'll, I'll be slightly blind again for a bit. It's oh, no. <laughs> unfortunate. I'm yeah. so uh, Lindsay fan suggested fan. Ezra Miller as Seth. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> I don't know. I have... Ezra so distinctly into my mind as um Sam no not Sam as the character in Perks of Being a Wallflower I can't remember his name off the yeah. top of my head and so I just always imagine him as gay and so I'm like what <laughs> it's not the right face I picture Seth having Seth feels like cool like like rugged I don't know <laughs> he seems too cool Sam is like a, I mean, Ezra is a perfect, um, like, nerdy. Mm-hmm. Quite a quirky look to him. Yeah, I mean, I love him. Don't get me wrong, I do. But I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't seem right. Patrick! <laughs> Thank you, A Reader's World. <laughs> that was his character in Perks. 
because originally at first I was like maybe the guy who plays Jess in Gilmore Girls but I was like no he's still got like that too rough of a look for what oh. I meant yeah like it's still know. too hard in the face. Like, I'm, I'm thinking something that's a little softer. Something soft, yeah. Mm. I think Ezra's um, cheekbones are too hard. <laughs> this is why I can't hand cast characters. I overthink it way too much. If they're not right, they're not right. And then I just... There was this kid I was subbing high school the other day, and he looked like a Seth. But <laughs> I really don't know him. No one else has seen him. <laughs> he was annoying, too. I did not enjoy him in my classroom. But he seemed like a... Good looking Seth, mm. <laughs> Tom Holland, or Nick Robinson. I don't know who these people are. Oh, um, is Tom Holland Spider Man? Yes. Okay. And then, um, oh wait, hold on. And then Nick Robinson is in like every. He is like the Shailene Woodley of like male book to movie adaptation rules in 2017 like he was in everything everything oh. the character of love simon I, I feel like seth has a little bit more edge uh, to them than that's nick what i robinson. think man. i mean nick robinson could pull it off i'm looking at this picture of him he looks pretty cool for school right now <laughs> with his long hair that's he's all greased beauty. up going that way he's <laughs> I was yeah, so intimidated you. when I met him because he's like so not an expressive person in real life, and he's mm -hmm. like he's one of those people that's just like, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't. Yes. Like I feel like yeah. Nick Robinson would be a better Seth than Tom Holland. Tom Holland is too clean. Yes, too <laughs> clean cut. I should say, yeah, too blonde. <laughs> I agree. I agree. He's a little too clean cut. Uh, but who would play the jock? Because that's the important one. Um, can we just go with, like, the guy who plays Bryce from 13 Reasons oh, I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> can he just play all Way the shitty cast. rapists in books? Uh, I love that show so much. It was so good. But I hate him. Like an asshole. He looks like a suitable asshole. He yes. does, right? I was watching some interview. I think I was watching the, like, um, the... 13 Reasons Why, like, interviews afterwards. And he's in one, and he seems like this really nice person. Yeah, he seems like a really I'm nice like, person in real life. I'm too creeped out by you. <laughs> no, thanks. We he did a great job. I bet he could be a great Mitchell in this book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, name, w Mitchell. Like, That's it's just a creepy guy's name. Sorry if anyone's named Mitchell crazy. watching. Um, do we have any more questions? Or does that really conclude it? Do we have any in our... No, we don't have any on Twitter. I want Twitter. to say Jake Paul, but I hate it with the passion. I would hate to have him star in this movie. <laughs> Wait, I have to remember who Jake Paul is. <laughs> it's Everyday Please. Bro with the Disney Channel flow. Oh, ew. He's yeah. not allowed to be anywhere. Except for maybe Mitchell. He looks like a Mitchell. Yeah, he could play a really fucking <laughs> good Mitchell. <laughs> but then again he can't act so he'd probably ruin the movie oh so. see no you're not allowed to be in this movie <laughs> <laughs> all right um so are we what the next book is let's just briefly um remind everybody that okay. the next final bibliophone book club book is renegades by marissa meyer the, the technical months are from november until january so we're halfway through at the moment um <laughs> But we'll so, probably do the live show in Feb. We don't know when. Yeah. We'll figure it out um, a little closer. Yeah, we normally it takes us some time to to plan the live show. So you got you got time. Got a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Our biblio book clubs are so not so, specific. We're literally <laughs> the most low commitment book club there is on the internet. I swear. <laughs> That's accurate. But I'm very very excited for it. Um. So, no, it is not the Buy No Bibliothon book. Every single time, we, we all get confused. So, the Buy No Bibliothon book for this readathon is, if Kaz wants to show it, Otherworld oh. by Jason Siegel and Kristen Mills. So, that's the group book for the readathon from the, is it the 20th to the 26th? Yeah. So that's the week to read Other Worlds, and then you have basically until February to read Renegades. Yes. 
Um, so yeah, if you have any questions or if you want to share your thoughts prematurely with us, you can do so on Twitter or Instagram at be bibliothon on Twitter and at by no bibliothon on Instagram. But thank you guys so much for chatting with us and for tuning in for our live show for Moxie by Jennifer Matu because I really, really love this book and I loved this discussion and I'm so happy we got to chat about it. Yeah, it's definitely That's the kind of book we can really talk about for a while. Mm -hmm. So much. It might be my favorite book of 2017. Oh my Ooh. gosh, really? Okay. I mean, like, so good. It's one of my faves, too. It's one of my faves, it's too. It's so good. It's one of those books that, like, stays with you. Yes. Not, like, necessarily you want to reread over and over again, but just, like, really sits with you or something. I don't know. It's really well, yeah, good. Yeah, it does really make you think and evaluate things. There's just so many different topics that we do see in everyday life included in here that I think is really important. So it's, it's just a thinker. It's a thinker, that one. Mm -hmm. I yes. totally agree. Alrighty. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will definitely chat with you guys on all the social medias. Um, but that is it for this live show, and thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.